Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenísimas tardes. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome to a new brand episode of the show. Welcome home. Today, I'm really excited because we're going to talk about home. You know, how to create a home, how to, how to build a house, or I don't know. We'll see what's going on. Our guest today is Simon, Simon Cardona O'Dwyer. Right. I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bien. <laughs> first, first test passed uh, from Somni Arquitectura. How are you today? Welcome to Welcome Home. Thank you very much for inviting me to your really cool program. Well, thank you. And I'm doing really well, uh, starting the, the week and, and really enthusiastic. So. Uh, ah, well, that's a good attitude for a Monday because usually Monday it's like Monday mood and plus today it's raining, so it's like, eh. These are, these are the best days. <laughs> these are the best days. Yeah, that's the attitude. That's the attitude. So, so tell me, Simon or Simon, like, uh, do you respond to everyone if... Or do you prefer to be called Simon or Simon or both? Well, some people uh, struggle to say Simon, <laughs> so okay. they say Simon. But I normally um, I'm called Simon. Simon, vale. So tell me, how did you end up, or actually, uh, were you born here in the Costa Blanca? Or I was born in Costa Blanca, yes. Okay. Uh, my father is Spanish and my mother is Irish, so I have a, a bit of a mix. And um, yeah, I was born in in, in Alicante. So in Alicante. Okay. Well, that's great. I love you know the bilingual people who are born yeah. like that. You know, half half. That's like it's like for me. It's like a like a bliss. Yes. I don't know. Um, what do you think about like how your brain work? Wow, uh, <laughs> it, it works really fast. <laughs> <laughs> like um, well, I, I actually speak Valenciano as well. So okay, so <coughs> I was born. Polyglot. I grew up. Uh, speaking the three languages so for me it's very easy to change to switch over from one language to another and apart from ch switching and changing like do you think in the three of them or do you usually think in one language and then you should you just switch actually it's i haven't thought of that ah. no, but I, um <laughs> yeah uh, i'd say mainly i i think in spanish but mm -hmm. when i'm if, if i struggle a little bit with some translation i I switch on you to Spanish and then translate, but normally I'm, I'm, I think, with the language I speak. You just refocus. Wow, that's great. I, that, that's what I was thinking. It's like, wow. I, I'm, I'm always fascinated about that, you know, about the brain of bilingual people or polyglot people. I think that's, uh, as I said, like a gift or a bliss. Anyway, anyway, let's talk about uh, projects and, and, you know, professional career because, okay, you were born here, you're half-half, but then you started a project which is called Somni Arquitectura. Yeah. And how did it all start? It in Was it hard to start and, and when actually? Is it a long time or? Um, the, well, the, the brand started like three or four years ago. Okay. Um, but at the beginning it was a, a, a bit uh, hard to put the whole idea together. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in the last two years uh, we set up the, the company, the SL. And since then, we we started to. I joined my my business partner, mm -hmm. and then we started to to develop projects, all sorts of projects, uh, refurbishing, especially refurbishing uh, houses or apartments. Mm -hmm. Throughout all the Marina Baixa, or are you focused on in Benidorm especially? Uh, or well, we're not really focused on Benidorm, but mm -hmm. we did some some projects in Altea, Alfaz, uh, Polop, La Nucia. Uh, Finestrat. So this is the main area where we where we work. But uh, we are open to other other towns nearby. So. Okay. And the office is in Benidorm, right? Or the office is in Benidorm. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. We will uh, before closing the interview. We will remind uh, the contact details and where are you in case someone wants to contact you and ask you for what type of advice. I mean, like what can if a customer of if for instance I'm thinking about doing some changes in the bathroom or um, maybe I want some ideas to redecor the house. Uh, can we contact you or are you focused on refurbish or like creation? Yeah, um, <coughs> we are we're focused on refurbishing the whole house. Mm -hmm. um, the smaller areas, uh, we're not so so focused on that. So okay. in the last in the last two years, the the main project that we've done is uh, refurbishing the whole house okay and 
it's not just refurbishing, but we, we do the, the 3D designing, uh, house uh, styling, mm -hmm. and we help decorating as well uh, at the end of the phase of the project. So. Correct, because sometimes, or we usually, the customer wants a change or wants to refurbish the house, but have no, like a defined idea, or maybe you can suggest or advise, like, look, maybe this room should be better, like, over there and then you should move the living room to to the other corner or something like that yeah yeah we do that <laughs> um, you do magic <laughs> <coughs> yeah sometimes we do magic <laughs> okay. um uh, but basically the first thing you need to know about your project is what do you really need mm -hmm. so because sometimes you you have a house where it used to be a big family living inside mm -hmm. and then you think you realize that you don't need so much space for for bedrooms so mm -hmm. you create a new uh, like a like an office or a studio mm -hmm. or you want to uh, join bedrooms together and have a, a bigger main bedroom correct or sometimes you, you want to change the layout of the house mm -hmm. So we find a way to bring the kitchen from one side of the house to the other. To the other, <laughs> exactly. And sometimes the uh, yeah, bathrooms is not so is not so easy. Um, well, I don't think it's never easy, but <laughs> yeah, because there's, there's some conditions that you have to uh, bear in mind because um, you have to uh, respect the the pipes and all the draining. So mm -hmm. this is important for bathrooms. And something I learned recently that I didn't know that in case this is you <coughs> know curiosity the pipes. Um, it's not enough to know. Okay, there is a one pipe here because one is like to go down and the other to go up something like that with the water like bajante si, uh, si like el, do uh, I have yeah yeah am, am I making a point in here yeah yeah of course um, <laughs> well there there is the wat the water pipes that bring the water into In, the house exactly and the draining pipes mm -hmm. that take the water out of the house out. So, and they are not uh, intertwined like possible to intertwine and where there is like a no 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 the, <laughs> the, the, the clean water comes <laughs> through Clara. one pipe Clara, and the Clara. dirty water comes out in and a different pipe <laughs> and especially in you know in the building part and constructions i think the problem resolution and adaptability skills are really needed like I think when you're building a house or doing a refurnish ref process you always have like uh, unexpected events <laughs> and you need to solve an issue like yes you need uh, to be there, quick there is very little times where your project doesn't have any issues <laughs> so <laughs> this is something we advise to the the clients because sometimes you set up a, a, a budget for your project mm -hmm. uh, let's say 100,000, 50,000, whatever. And we always suggest to save like a 10% extra mm -hmm. because these kind of things that you don't see when, when you're putting the project together, uh, these are the kind of things that, that can break your budget. So this is some budget you have to bear in mind. Like a buffer or something? Yeah, exactly. Um, so it doesn't mean you have to use it, but you have to bear in mind that could, there is a chance you can use it, mm -hmm. and also depending on the, the the development of the project, if everything goes well, you can always have a little bit of money for for the last part of the project where you want to maybe refer um, use different furniture mm -hmm. or um, the kitchen appliances or or just change the kitchen, maybe upgrade it or mm -hmm. or anything you need in the house. Well, uh, there's always something to do in a house. You oh know, yes. to improve. <laughs> you have to st you have to draw the line because they and say yeah exactly enough. And also we we take care of your budget because it's really easy to to go on Instagram and find a lot of things that you want to do in your house, and it's okay. But we remind you that your budget is there and you have to correct take care of it and stick to it because it's yeah. Exactly. It's so. easy to go crazy and... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everything is... Well, yeah, it's quite expensive. Oh, well, the materials for constructions are... Mm. Well, it depends uh, It depends how much money you want to spend on materials because you can find some good tiling for 15 euro square meter okay. or 20 euro. And you can also spend 100 euro on, on a square meter. Yeah, of course. If you go to... to um, 
high cost brands mm -hmm. uh, it's really easy to to spend that money but it, it's also um you have to you have to point which way you want to go because sometimes with the 15 20 euro uh, square meter materials you, you have a really nice house mm -hmm. Uh, if you want to go a bit higher, you can go higher. But yeah, it's, it's just make sure you want to make sure what you want to do in the in the house because, and sometimes you you spend a lot of money in tiling mm -hmm. and you forget you have to spend money on walls. <laughs> <laughs> um, Important detail. Yeah, so uh, the balance is is the key for the project. You also take part on that, like you advise the customer and say, look, maybe you should reconsider this tile because uh, the budget is going to, or we're going to overpass the budget and we should bear in mind the appliances for the, the you know, for the toilet or whatever, or like, do you yeah, do we'd, advisors? We'd, yeah, <laughs> we, we do that. Um, <laughs> but the, is, with our budget, it's really easy because we set up a, a price in the tiling. Mm -hmm. and we right. calculate the approximate uh, square meters so you have a rough idea what you're going to spend on tiling okay if you go on, if you want to go higher the difference is it shouldn't be a lot because uh, if you're thinking if you're multiplying by 20 square uh, euro square meters and then you find a piece it's 22 or 23 yeah it's not that uh, it's, it's not a lot mm -hmm. so this is a way to to keep the the budget real because uh, it's really easy to to <laughs> to go, go over crazy budget and go, go to crazy the, yeah. to the moon and uh, i've seen in the website that you have like a f is it called full pass somni or full is like i thought it's like a from a to z project or something like that full house full house um yeah we what is that <laughs> you mean the refreshing mm -hmm. yeah let me yeah let yeah, me yeah. so um we yeah, this is the idea of refurbishing the whole house. Okay. So we we draw the the layout. No, full the plan. That's what I've seen in the in the full world. plan. Yeah, full that's plan. That's okay. that's right. Okay. So what what we start the the project since the beginning from the from zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we listen to your requirements, what you need, mm -hmm. how do you want to focus your project, mm -hmm. and we pay a lot of attention to what you're talking, but you don't realize until we come with the idea and then you you think wow, wow. <laughs> how do you get to this point <laughs> 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 yeah so um it's very important to listen because this is where we find all the key points to for your project mm -hmm. um yeah so then we we make sure that the layout or the new the new uh, vision of the project is what you what you're looking for mm -hmm. then we calculate the project the sorry the budget mm -hmm. And then you decide which way you want to go. You want to go forward or you want to maybe hold on a bit. Okay. Um, and then we just start the, the project. And do you also manage um, the, the paperwork with the administrations and the, yeah, we do. the mayor, something yeah. like that? Okay. Um, we make sure you have the right permissions for your project. So you... So, so I can forget and trust Somni and say, okay, they they, ca they take care of it. That's right. You can <laughs> go to the beach yeah. and <laughs> or to, the, to the restaurant Great. and uh, enjoy your day because we are taking care of all these kind of issues or things you have to worry about. And do you think since COVID or lockdown, we are more conscious or that we take pay more attention to our home? Like we want to have it more cozy or nice or feel comfortable at home? Definitely, yes. Um, since COVID, uh, since everyone had to spend a lot of time at home, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we've realized that it's not really what we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> because you always, uh, you always have a plan outside. And yeah, spending so much time at home, it, it, you found all these things that you didn't really worry about them, but they're still there. So mm -hmm. after COVID, uh, a lot of clients, they decided to, to change their home and... and and make it uh, comfortable and, and cozy for them because uh, this is uh, this is where you rest this is where you recharge your batteries this is where you spend time with, with your family or your friends and, and this is a uh, this is home home is home home is home <laughs> correct it's like a temple or, uh, and for you for instance um, can you 
I would say disconnect at your home or like when you're at home you're always thinking like ah, I should change that or and I should uh, modify that or I should add an, a new structure or something like that or you, your house is okay with that with that and you don't um, <laughs> my house is okay with that but I spend time <laughs> fixing other houses <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true that's true I can imagine yeah I can imagine and I've seen also in the website that you are um, also creating or developing the module houses thing is it the containers yeah is we we built uh, a couple of houses with containers mm -hmm. this was uh, an idea that came up from my uh, my older job i used to work in the sailing industry i'm a construction and civil engineer uh -huh. but i spend a lot of time working for the sailing industry okay so we travel around the world and we bring all our tools and our equipment inside containers so I was uh, working around and I thought well, maybe you could build a house out of this container. So uh, I, I started to develop that idea. In That's fact, great. Yeah, it's really good. Cool. And I think it's like more sustainable, maybe? If it, it, is, it, is, uh, it is very sustainable because you're using all the structure and the, mm -hmm. the volume of the house. And as per the permissions, for instance, like um, my parents have several plots, olive plots, mm -hmm. and I don't know, have the enough meters to build a house. But yeah. would this container be okay to, you know, to pop, put it in the olive plot or I'll not? Pop a house. <laughs> um, well, I wouldn't recommend to do that. Okay. <laughs> Advice noted. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, some people try to do that, but mm -hmm. uh, you still have to follow the regulations and every town hall uh, allows you to build um, the amount of square meters mm. depending on your on your plot or your piece of land. So I, I wouldn't go into this kind of project without having enough uh, land or a lot of meters to, to build a, a house. It's a still a house, even though it's container, it's a still considered a house. It's not like, a, I don't know, like an yeah, yeah. autobahn or something like that. Exactly. So. And uh, even even to have a caravan in your in your plot, mm -hmm. you should have a permission. But okay. it's not something that the <laughs> town halls are really looking into that. So. Mm -hmm. Not that. Okay. Good to know. They're busy with bigger projects. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, when you are designing or redesigning houses, are you are like key points that you are keeping in mind? Like, for instance, the light, or like I don't know, mm, it's important. Uh, uh, well, it depends, no. But I think the light is really important to have. A light is the energy that comes to into your house, mm -hmm. and yeah. So this is this is one of the things that we really look into because. Uh, a lot of the houses are a bit dull they're, they're not they have a lot of light mm. so we we look into the the house the layout the new configuration and we we try to make it uh, in a way that you use as much light as possible mm -hmm. in, in the house and also what we do is um, we design the layout in a way that you move around the house really in a comfortable way mm. What uh, the, does it mean, actually? The yeah, it, like you try to make uh, you r reduce the amount of corridors, mm -hmm. or when you set up the when when you draw the the layout of a bedroom, the the bed always goes to on, on one of the sides. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want the the bedroom to sorry the bed to be in your way when you walk into the bedroom. I know what the you mean. Little things that make your life easier. Easier. Yeah. And sometimes you don't realize because it's no. been there uh, since many years. So yeah, it's like all or like ancient construction. It was always with a lot of corridors, not yeah. so many light, mm -hmm. and that that's good. That you know the new projects are changing and reducing that because I think it's like a waste waste of a space. The corridors. Maybe? It is or a waste of a space, yeah, and and also before they used to, it was better to have four or five bedrooms in a house mm -hmm. even though they were smaller but they, your house had four or five bedrooms yeah but <laughs> nowadays we we look into a bit more minimalistic uh, design and you want something comfortable and functional for for your lifestyle mm -hmm. um, some some bedrooms they are converted into your your, your toy bedroom where you have your bicycle or your 
some of your gym equipment mm -hmm. and it ends up being your your sports bedroom or correct. correct so yeah things are changing in in the homes and and we adapt to that yeah and that's important to adapt to the new changes and to adapt to what the society is demanding exactly so. for example after covid mm -hmm. uh well we realized that we needed a, a bigger reception at home where we can have uh, we can hang all our clothes, uh, your okay. your jacket, or and the shoes you want to change maybe. your shoes, mm -hmm. or just uh, get comfortable before walking into the house. And this is something that it's in demand now. Mm -hmm. The older houses wouldn't have that. So. No, 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 no. And also, we don't have the habit of changing shoes before entering the house. I yeah. think I learned that mm, when I lived abroad and I spend time with other cultures that mm -hmm. I learned that and now I'm used to that yeah. and I, I do it myself but I for instance at my parents they don't do that and, <laughs> and I think it's, that's a good habit you know yeah <laughs> okay so we take and I've seen that you sail are you a sailor like I am a, a sailor yes like a, in the song <laughs> 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 but it's like a hobby or was it professional um I, I've sailed uh, professionally yeah wow uh, I still do but not not in a in, not in a like for your for your full not full time and not for not full time yeah exactly okay. I, I am now I'm I'm spending a lot of time with uh, my company mm -hmm. and so the the sport is in the second second plane but um, I still do competitions so I I organize myself my spare time to to go to uh, championships so and how i don't know these championships take a weekend or it's just one day that you do a tour and come back i have no idea about sailing i know it's like a boat with a sail with a sail yeah. <laughs> and that's all but i have no idea but one of our colleagues in the radio fair yeah and i i saw that you were knew each other and he told me it was because of the sail sailing he's also uh, an expert or like a sailor yeah but yeah. i have no idea about it i'm curious so I, I, I'll, I'll explain you. Yes, please. <laughs> um, depends on the on the competition. Sometimes you there are just weekend competitions. Mm -hmm. So you the boat we sail the boat or one of our colleagues sails the boat to the port where we're gonna we're okay. gonna race, and you go have you go have like a coastal race or you do like a like some loops in the in the area where we're gonna race. Mm -hmm. And then there are other bigger uh, championships or races where you spend the whole week uh, sailing. So these are the these are the, the good competitions. Ah, the well. good ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah, one one week over the sea, like yeah, mm, risking your life. Well, not really. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. Um, depends on the on the race, but sometimes you have like a like a, like. Yeah, like different races mm -hmm. in the different regattas in in the same ah, race. I have no idea what is a regatta in English, but uh, okay. Regatta, yeah. Regatta, um, yeah. Regatta. <laughs> regatta. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you maybe in one day you have two or three races. Okay. Uh, and they are they last maybe an hour or an hour and a half, and that happens for maybe for the six or seven days of the week, and then at the end of the week. They add all your positions in all these races that you've been doing during the whole no, week. Yes. So, you so the the boat that has less points mm -hmm. in the in the final uh, count is the the winner of the regatta. Okay. Or the championship. We we'll call it championship. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And um, have you done it only in the Mediterranean or or also in the Atlantic Ocean? Uh, well, I, I I sailed or well, I actually raced across the Atlantic. Really, I yeah. think that's crazy. Like you're risking your life actually with well. a sail <laughs> sailing boat through the Atlantic. Come on, I'm <laughs> not really. I mean, there is people that they sail on their own in solo solo racing. That's crazy. Well. And the boat is like six point five meters, so they are Oof. the ones that are risking it. Oof. But uh, these days, he, they have a lot of equipment on board you have a uh, radar satellite so you're always in good communication okay. um, also the forecast the, they're more accurate and you know which way you're sailing or you, what you're facing in advance 
So you measure the risk and then you risk uh, and then the you amount take you want to... The, the decision or... Exactly. But have you sailed throughout a storm? Something like... like something. Have you ever been scared? Something... A problem? Yeah. Well, you, you're not... <laughs> You don't have to be scared. You have to be. You have to respect the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we had we had some good days where we had a big storm and um, yeah, it was interesting ones. Wow. Th those are the ones that you remember and yeah, that's true. And you that's laugh. True. You, you remember that day where we broke the mast? I'm like yes. <laughs> if everything is so smooth, then it's not. A smooth yeah. sea never made a good sailor. So. Okay, good to know. And I'm pretty sure that the learnings from sailing you have applied to the constructions or maybe, you know, the the attitude to be facing storms or difficult situations, you, you can replicate or do it the similar case when you're having an issue with a pipe or a, well. <laughs> or a wall or something like I, that? Um, well, you could, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it's not, uh, you don't really need to... Okay. To do it that way, but <laughs> you can measure you can measure the risk in a project. <laughs> Grumetes <laughs> to the left. Okay. No, no. Well, okay. well uh, it, but uh, there is a like a, a similarity. You you build a in sailing is really important to have a, a good team mm -hmm. and a good communication. And this is what I translate. Uh, sorry, I transfer to to my mm -hmm. my team um, because yeah, building is building, no, but you're still building a house for for a person and you're you're using well sort of using the house for a few months while you're doing the project so we take care of of your home while while we're doing the project great it's yeah. it's a rough war it's a rough job mm. but we still care of your of your house because this is this is your house <laughs> and in your where you're gonna live after the project, the place where you're gonna live, and yeah, exactly, yeah, you live in exactly. good conditions. Okay, and any funny anecdotes or something like, like you can might remember? I don't know with with sailing or building or maybe exchanging Spanish with English or something like that. Something funny to remember? Well, um, well, I'm gonna tell you a little story. See, crossing yeah. the Atlantic. Wow. <laughs> The third day we were we started the race. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a uh, the first storm, wow. and this is when we broke the mainsail. So that was uh, a point where we had to decide if we were sailing back to port okay. or we continued two weeks sailing two to weeks. cross the Atlantic. So without the mainsail. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we put our, ha our heads together and said, okay, well, let's make this work. So we we reconstructed the the sail and we used uh, other sails to adapt the, to to the mast and and that's how we we continue with the with the race. Wow! And you made it. You reached the I don't know what was the destination. The Caribbean. Uh, Caribbean, yeah. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the prize and yeah, you got. Yeah. To so the yeah, it was really paradise. it was really fun. Um, it, it's a challenge, and this is how you learn. Uh, in life, no, for facing challenges and Correct. the challenges that you already passed, they're they're easy, they're easy ones uh, after that. So yeah, they become learnings and yeah, yeah. exactly another uh, prueba superada, no? Exactly, we, we passed it. And then when when you reach the Caribbean, then for going back is the same process, or one will drive or will sail back, and the rest with a plane. There is <laughs> yeah, As we? yeah. When I wish I had time to <laughs> to be sailing all day, but yeah. Clear. Um, there is a, a another team that they bring the back the ah, boat back. So. I see. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Thank you for the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> and I always like to close the interviews and this uh, exchange, this conversation with uh, an inspirational quote. I don't know if you um, take you do your own mantra or if you have some inspirational quotes to help you on your work or on a, on your daily life. Well, uh, I had a, a friend that uh, used to remind me the, this quote, and, and sometimes I, I think about it a lot because uh, it's really powerful, I think. Okay. <laughs> because something, uh, some people, when they, they have a, a big issue, they, they s the first thing they think about is, why us? No? Why, mm, yeah. why us? Why did we have this problem? Or, but I tell my guys, I try us. 
Try us. Yeah. Okay. You'll find we we will we will find the way. Yeah. Exactly. Wow, oh, that's powerful. It's true. Mm-hmm. So, aquí estoy yo, no? <laughs> come on, come on. Let's, let's make it work. Let's uh, face it. We, we, for example, this re- sorry is reminding me uh, the project we were what we are doing now, and the it's a big project. It's a 200 square meter house, mm-hmm. and and the the client uh, every week he keeps changing little things, mm-hmm. and also we find stuff in in the house that we need to repair or it wasn't expected. So every week he says, "Well, good luck," and I said, "Well, mm, try <laughs> us. You you will you will see how far we can get." <laughs> exactly, exactly. Wow, how how much patience you know to deal with customers and keep them happy, but not, you know, it's like okay, meet the expectations, be a good customer service, but don't get crazy over the pro- <laughs> the process if they are highly demanding or like changing everything every day is like going crazy but well and there there is uh, there is some little truth but in what we do is we the the clients we work with uh, it's clients that we co- connect with them okay uh, we we don't do every every project we if we like the project and we think there is good feeling and we think we are the right uh, builders or constructing team okay. or designing team and the, the client is their, their right client, then we can make a, a nice project. So uh, this is something it doesn't work from one side and the other, the, other high, the other side has to put a lot of effort. This is something we work together. Okay, it's like a win-win and you are, a, you are highly selective with the customers as well. That uh, you yeah, having. yeah. Okay, that's good. I mean, we're here because we enjoy the job, so... Uh, we we choose the the jobs we enjoy wisely. That's good. <laughs> good to know. Yeah. And as you were saying, you also offer decoration services, right? Like um, yeah, that's right. Okay, so good to know. Yeah, you you we well, you can see a three D three D of your house, 3D. and mm-hmm. you can see the materials you're gonna use in in the house, and the way you're gonna set up the furniture or the curtains or anything well, you like in decoration. That's um like a great opportunity to if. You cannot, you know, envision mm-hmm. that uh, the final result, and you can you can see it through the 3D. Yeah. Well, that's perfect. So, Simon, uh, where can we find you in uh, Benidorm? Where is the the office? And the office is in Calle La Viga, mm-hmm. number one. Number one. Yeah. Um, and the website Somni Arquitectura. The website is uh, somniarquitectura.com. Vale. And yeah. then you have Instagram. We you can, can check on Instagram. Somni Arquitectura. Yeah. And Facebook as well. Okay. Uh, anything else that you want to add that I haven't uh, asked you or something that you want to mention? Well, I really enjoyed this this interview, so I, th- I think it's been very good. Yeah. And I think we can have a second round in yeah. some months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. <laughs> I'm happy to come back. Okay. To make an update of the project and to keep on talking about home creation, which is, I think, is an interesting world. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank Simone. you. Thank you very much. And for everyone, see you all next Monday with, again, interesting conversation and, you know, practicing English, which is always good. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Hasta luego.